Here I've dug a hole at uh, one end of the first beds I'm looking at. We've gone down eight inches and I will pull, uh, put up a still of that showing you what's going on here. This is a bed that two years ago was created. A lot of uh, organic material, compost, and manure was added and tilled into the soil with a, a small rototiller. And that really shows in what we've got in the soil today. We've got about four inches of organic matter followed by four inches of sand, mostly. This island uh, sand is our predominant soil type. If it's unamended, untreated, and we don't show much else than that. The sand was fairly well compacted when I dug into that. And it means that our water and our roots are going to hit that and stop. So we do want to try and correct that if we can. Now, again, with the history of this bed, two years ago we started it up, amended it, grew in it. Last year nothing was grown in here, it was left uh, for weeds. And there was plenty of dead matter on the top of this. Leaves, uh, twigs, sticks, dead plants that, uh, and weeds that had grown the year before. And a majority of that was left over when we cleaned this bed out uh, earlier this week. Now, of course, the chickens were happy to have it. <laughs> they love having stuff to scratch around, and they've got a pen full of uh, you know, leaves that we raked up right now. But as far as the soil condition, it's not a great sign that nothing's decomposing on the top. Uh, I had sprayed this down with compost tea at one point. I did not look at that tea under a microscope, so I have no idea what its activity was like. Uh, but I'm gonna say we still need to work on the microbial and fungal content in this, uh, this bed. So I'm going to take a sample. We're going to read only macronutrients from this. As far as the uh, chemical tests I'm gonna run are. Just running a simple home test for NPK and pH. This will tell us what we're at. It's not going to tell us what we're capable of. Now I'm also going to take a portion of this, pull out the water soluble content, and we'll take a look at it under the microscope. That should give us a better idea of what we're working with as far as what kind of life we've got going on here. And if we've got everything we need, then it should just be a matter of time and proper management mostly leaving the soil alone. If we don't have what we need, then we're going to have to look into uh, compost tea sprays and drips, maybe injection, and amending the soil with good healthy compost to try and get it running. Now, I had no problem growing in this two years ago when we first started up. Everything was great. We had a uh, good crop of strawberries. We did have onions that we tried to run in here and failed, uh, but we believe that was more uh, poor timing on when we planted and how the season uh, panned out. So as far as taking our soil sample, if you've never taken one before, this is a long bed that's approximately 3 feet wide and about 15, 18 feet long. So I'm going to take three samples. One a couple feet away from the end, in the middle, one a couple feet away from the other end, and one straight in the middle of the bed. And that should give us a, a decent average of what we're looking at. As far as getting the sample, We've dug a hole so we have access to the entire profile of the soil, as deep as we're interested. And I don't believe most of my plants are going to be going below 8 inches with their roots this year. You know, again, we've got the, uh, the sandy, compacted soil underneath here. So we want to start breaking into that, but that's not what we're interested in right now. So I'm going to go for a sample for 8 inches along the, uh, the soil line here. And the goal is to get an even mix down the entire length. Now I've scooped everything out. We're nice and clean in there. So I'll be able to take an even scraping. And when we pull that back out, we should have a pretty good characteristic mix for that eight inches. Now normally I'd like to have something like a plastic bucket to put this in. Uh, we're running on a bit of a budget today because I'm sampling three different locations. I don't have enough buckets and I don't really have the need for a large sample here. We're just doing a simple chemical analysis which will require about a cup and a half of soil. And then under the microscope we need very little. So I'm going to move on to the other two test holes for this bed. Uh, the other two will not be as large. This one I dug out so that we could see the profile of our soil. 
and then I'll move on to the two other uh, locations where I'm going to be taking samples. Everything's getting put in labeled bags, and we'll bring it inside for the rest. I'll see you on the other side. All right, so we're back inside, and we've got two out of the three soil samples that I'd planned to take. Those are labeled in their individual bags. Ended up with, oh, about three or four cups of soil there. Making sure to take about the same amount of, uh, of material out of each of the test holes, and trying to get a, uh, a consistent sample from the entire height of that hole. Yep, and she is unfolding on me. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> and we've brought that inside so that we can run our tests. We've got the test that doesn't really matter much, which will give us pH and NPK. Uh, this is only going to tell us information about what's currently water soluble in our sample. It's not going to tell us anything about uh, the soil's capacity or the microbes and other uh, microscopic life in there that will release water soluble chemicals once the plant's in there. And this is for the test that does matter. Uh, just a little bit of history about this scope. Uh, this was a yard sale find for a whopping $15. This is an old Fisher Scientific microscope. They don't sell this model anymore, but it's pretty similar to the ones they currently sell. We've got a 10x eyepiece. We have a 4, uh, what was the other one here? A 4, a 10, and a 40x objective. Uh, we have a dialable orifice on the uh, illuminator here. And we have, I believe, halogen or xenon. This is xenon uh, illuminator. Uh, this thing was in bad shape when I got it. I still need to replace that switch eventually. Uh, but the objectives had a green congealed gunk on them, especially the 40X. Uh, the 40X was completely non-operational. Couldn't see through it. Uh, it was completely gunked up. It would not move because it is spring-loaded in there. Objective had to be pulled all the way apart. Now you saw a bit of video that I posted uh, I had just gotten a new mount to hook my camera onto this eyepiece, and I took a shot of uh, a soil sample that I had sitting around. I've since then pulled this thing apart again and cleaned it out. Had uh, a bit of work to be done. And as far as the camera mount, this is an Orion Steadypix Pro. Now, I was shopping around for a, an eyepiece camera insert for the microscope. And they start around forty, fifty dollars, and they're very low quality at that, uh, you know, that dollar range. When I've got a nice 1080p camcorder that I carry in my pocket every day, <laughs> so this came up. It was about forty-five dollars. Uh, purchased one that was in a damaged box instead of brand new. No problems with it. And this just mounts onto the eyepiece. I did have to add a cardboard shim because my eyepiece is a little bit narrow, uh, but it mounts on nice and securely. Holds the phone well has quarter 20 mounts everywhere so I can pull this apart and use it for other things. So this is a nice tool. This is how we're going to be taking our photos and video through the scope. And I've got my usual bits. We've got some water, some spare slides and slide covers, uh, droppers as we need them, a clean container to hydrate our soil and decant off just a, uh, a sample of the water that, uh, that results, and our sample bin. I've also got an extra bin for any trash that we generate along the way. So let me get set up here. We're going to start with our, you know, commercial do-it-yourself NPK and pH test. All right, so we're just about ready to start this test. We've got our individual testing vials. They each have their color chart built into the front here. Uh, if you buy a different uh, style of test kit, it, you know, your results may vary. Uh, with this one, they include our chemicals, our testing uh, chemicals in color-coded uh, pill capsules, which we'll have to pull open here. The pH test is the quickest one to perform. We just dump in the prescribed amount of dirt and water to the little fill lines here, add the chemical and shake. Uh, the other three tests, the NPK, are where we need to take only the water soluble portion of the soil. So I've measured out. Uh, we've got a little bit less than what they recommend, but we'll have enough solution out of all of this. We've got 50 mil of soil here, and we are going to mix this in a 5 to 1 ratio with water. Again, different testing kits and methods will have uh, varied requirements here.
but this one will take the longest because we have to wait for the uh, solids in the solution to settle out. So to that I'm adding another 150. And 100 milliliters. I'm not going to be ultra precise with this, it doesn't need to be. We just need to hold to that ratio best we can. So we're going to mix this up, wash off all of the water soluble nitrogen, phosphor, and potassium off of our particulate. And once we're satisfied with the stirring, this is getting set to the side to settle. There we go. All right. Now on to the quick and easy test. For this one, we just need to fill with soil to our first line, followed with water to our second line. So there we are. And for this one, I'll use a smaller applicator. are. And now for our test chemicals. Over the vial, twist and pull. And now comes our pH test solution. Gonna check to make sure we don't have any big chunks hanging out. Nope, looks like we got just about everything into the trash. And now to cap and mix. So there we go. After a bit of mixing, that's good to go. We'll let that settle out just a bit to make it easy to read that color scale. Now again, we're going to have to wait on our uh, aqueous solution over there to settle out. So we will be back in a few minutes once that's happened. All right, so a little bit of time has passed, enough for most of the solids to settle out of our sample there. And as far as our pH test, yeah, with a card in the back so we can see this, uh, we landed right around 7, which is, uh, you know, good by my standards. I'd rather it neutral than anything else, even though a lot of plants prefer the soil to be slightly acidic. But again, we're just talking about available amounts and a generalization here. So, since we have mostly settled out here, as long as we are careful not to shake this back up, we should be able to get our sample out of here to check our NPK. And these are of course a bit different. We've got a fill line up here. The test cards here are removable, but we've got a second chamber here. The whole idea is that you can put your fluid in both sides so that the color patches that you have here to match up against are corrected for the color of your fluid. So let's start this out. We've got a, a clean plastic pipette. And when, There we are. And now for our test solutions.
Okay, so we've got our samples ready with our test solutions added. Now it's time to shake. And now that we've shaken these, we've got to give them 10 minutes to develop. So we'll set those to the side. In the meanwhile, we're going to prepare our slide. Now for this, I don't want to be as careful with the fluid. I want to get some of the lightest aggregates. We're going to mix up again. And we will grab a cover slip. And a fresh slide. Looks like there might be a tiny bit of lint on there. So we will grab a chem wipe. Just make sure that we are clear. I'm happy with that. Save that in case we need to wipe anything up. And now to grab our sample. And we are only looking for one drop. <laughs> Moved a little too quickly there, but we've got our drop. And now to smear with our cover slip. And cover. There we are. I know you probably can't see much. You're looking at water on glass with glass on top. <laughs> so there's not much to see there. But we are going to pull around our microscope and get set up. Alright, so I will be right back once I have our camera mount set up and we'll be looking under the scope of this sample while we wait on the other uh, tests to develop. Okay, so we're back and we are under the microscope. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any view other than through the phone here. So I'm a little bit limited in uh, what I can see, but it's not too bad. Uh, we are starting out with our 4X objective, uh, which, you know, 10X eyepiece, that's 40X total magnification. And what do we see? We see a lot of particulate in here. We'll take the clamps off and we'll start scanning around, see if there's anything of interest. We've got a couple of bubbles. We've got plenty of matter in here. Ah, what is this? What do we have here? Let's go in for a closer look. Alright, so this is our 10x objective, bringing us to 100x. Hmm. Now, is this just a bit of root matter? Or is this a chopped off piece of fungi? It looks a little bit too big to be fungi. Uh, and here we go for our highest magnification. That is our 40, bringing us to 400 times total magnification. Interesting. Now I am new to uh, working with soil samples under the microscope. Uh, this is still a learning experience for me, but I'm bringing you along with it. We have a filament here, and I cannot distinguish any cell walls. Interesting. 
And of course everything is inverted under the microscope. And what does my aperture sit at? I'm actually going to... Uh, let's go the other way. Let's go all the way down to our smallest aperture on the illuminator. And the phone, of course, is compensating for the lighting mostly, uh, but that does actually give us better clarity on a lot of, a lot of things in the sample. So yeah, we have something very cylindrical, no identifiable cell walls. And if I had to guess by the size of the bacteria next to it, if we assume they're about one micrometer across, wow. We're looking at 35, 45 micrometers wide. It's entirely possible that this is just a piece of uh, Cecil twine, uh, which I did use in that garden. But I am unsure. I don't see any, any coloration, any divisions along it. You know, it is rough, it's not very smooth, but... Alright, so that is an unknown. <laughs> Let's go back to our 4X. Ah, and now we definitely need the additional light. There we go. And let's again move around, see if there's anything else of interest here. Uh, plenty of dirt, some bubbles, some kind of aggregate there. Yep, that is a chunk of something. <laughs> All right. Back to 40. You can see the edge of the slide. I'm not noticing much motion at this magnification. Not seeing anything big. I'm not seeing any uh, any larger arthropods. Oh, there we go. What have we got here? Let's go in a little bit closer. Now that, hmm, it's going closer yet again, all the way up to 400x total. And that looks like it is outside of the cover slip due to the range where I'm focusing in. I mean, there's the first side of the cover slip. There's our actual solution that we're looking at. Yeah, it would look like that's on top of the cover slip, so that's contamination, probably for me wiping it off with the uh, chem wipe. I'm seeing some motion at this level. Of course, everything's heating up under the lamp. Let's try that trick again. And change the amount of light we've got. Oh, yes. I would call that a much more clear picture. All right, so now that we're in at this magnification, we're in at the you know, 40 times 10, we're in at 400, let's start looking around at what we've got. There's still a bit of thickness to the sample because most of the water is still there. But there is a ton of motion. I would say that we've got uh, you know, not a huge amount of bacteria, but we definitely have uh, a variety of bacteria in here. And here's another little trick. Let's add to our magnification an additional 4x digital zoom. <laughs> 
Thank you, phone. And with that, we've pushed the microscope even further. Yeah, due to the vibration I'm seeing, I'm going to say that that is activity. Not just eddy currents caused by the heat. Now the one thing I did not see in the last soil sample, and I haven't noticed in this one, oh, just as I was speaking of it, what I hadn't noticed was any fungi. And what have we got here? We have what looks like a strand of fungi. I don't see any cell walls dividing everything up. It is fairly clear. Yeah. So, I spoke too soon there. That's an odd little floater. What have we got there? This is definitely th uh, something that I need to study further. You know, identification of the soil microbes. Something we never did back in biology. Something I kind of wish we did. Oh. Look at those colonies. Those would be colonized aggregates. Hmm. Ah. Was that a rod? Looks like a rod. Let's try with some additional light, see what difference we get. Definitely less contrast. I think we're better off with the additional contrast. We have a number of minerals. Plenty of little guys floating around, jiggling and jiving. Look at those little guys go. Oh, and what have we got here? Another thing I have not noticed so far in this sample, or in the sample from the other day, I have not seen a single nematode. Which I am going to call a problem. Oh, that is a nice little colony we got going. A couple right near here. So as far as the weather conditions outside, which might affect you know, how much we have moving around right now, uh, we started to get a few signs of spring. Things melted, grass started growing, and then the past two nights we have been below freezing. Uh, nice weather spring out here. <laughs> So a few things could have gone back into or never gotten out of hibernation. A number of the bacteria might not yet be active. Yeah. And this really is kind of as expected. I mentioned while we were outside that a lot of the uh, detritus, the garbage left on the surface of the soil from you know, the previous year had not been decomposed at all and I'm not seeing any of the good guys that are in charge of decomposing that matter I'm not seeing the fungi not enough at least I'm not seeing the nematodes that should be eating a number of different things ooh what is this guy I'm 
not quite sure what that is. <clears throat> yeah, we've got bacteria. We've got little protozoa. Oh, this is a very regular ring shape right there. We can zero in on it, of course. Slide likes to jump as soon as I take my fingers off it. I don't have anything fancy like a uh, a mechanical uh, slide. Oh, and that little bit of jostle loosened her up. Yeah, that is a very regular ring-shaped something. And I do not believe that that is simply an air bubble. It looks a little too big to be that. But either way. Ah, now that is a chunk of root. All right, so, not liking what I see. I'm seeing bacteria. We'll probably have some protozoa waking up as the sample warms. Yeah. That is another chunk of root there. being washed away most likely because my cover slide has slipped <laughs> uh, so the whole sample is in motion but yeah yeah I'm not too happy with this we definitely need to do something about the fungal content the nematodes uh, while digging in those beds for these samples I didn't come across a single worm or worm ca uh, a cocoon and in general, I have not seen many worms in our yards. So we've got some issues to work on. Especially if we want to get uh, a decent crops out of the garden. And we want the lawns to reestablish. Uh, as far as the lawns go, we've got a few areas that were destroyed. Uh, when the chickens were left access to them all the time, uh, they just wore everything down to bare dirt. So they destroyed the top layer. They, uh, there wasn't enough area for the number of birds we had. There wasn't any rotation going on. Uh, so they destroyed everything there. And reestablishing the grass in a few areas that just don't get a lot of sunlight. Uh, and one area that gets a lot of bird seed uh, has been an issue. Uh, and I'm going to say, among all the other issues, the soil's not up to par. So we've got some work cut out for ourselves. Uh, we will see... Oh... Yeah, this sample is jumping all over the place now. But I thought I saw a little anthropod go by. Yes, where are you going, sample? The slide seems to have set. That doesn't seem to be the issue. So yeah, I lost my train of thought there, but we've got some work cut out for ourselves. Uh, now again, this soil was cold. Uh, we still haven't completely hit spring, even though it's the end of April right now. Um, so I will keep the sample inside for a day or two, and we will do this again. Oh, that looks like a bit of root matter. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, we've got divisions on that. That is root. Um, and we will go from there. All right. So I will come back in a minute so that we can take a look at our NPK test. That's had enough time to set up. Here we go with the NPK test that we'd started earlier. I've gone ahead and filled the control chambers for comparison. Uh, and of course, this is based on a very slight change in color, so it may not come out perfectly on camera. As far as our nitrogen, we are depleted. Our potassium, 
we are, I'm going to say, deficient. And our phosphor, uh, we've got a surplus. I don't know why we have a surplus of soluble uh, phosphor right now. Uh, most likely due to something that had been growing in there recently. <laughs> One of the weeds. Now again, this is a test of limited usefulness. This only tells us what a plant could get if its root was in there right now. It doesn't tell us what a plant could get uh, as it's growing, uh, as it's interacting with the, you know, the life in the soil, as it uh, feeds the bacteria around it so that the bacteria can break down the necessary nutrients that it needs, and as those bacteria are eaten by all the predators around it. Uh, from what we saw on the slide, we're lacking predators, we're lacking fungi, we've got some bacteria, uh, and based on the nitrogen there, um, you know, and the organic matter content, there are probably some levels that uh, could use a bit of help. So what have I got to focus on? I've got to make either a, uh, a tea or a concentrate of compost that has a high content of fungi. And that's going to need to go into the soil. Either sprayed on top, uh, you know, in a thick enough layer that it'll actually soak in, preferably covering with compost afterwards, or I might need to set up an injector so that I can put it directly into the soil, especially down into the sandy layers that were not touched by the rototiller. But we'll see what happens there. Uh, we've got to get some stuff set up outside, and if I am going to deal with compost, I've got to get a decent supply of it. We have some compost that we've been making with the straw and chicken manure that's taken out of the coop. I would not call it ready though. Uh, it is a very immature compost. It's had plenty of time, but it did not have the right uh, uh, CN ratio when it was set up, and it hasn't been turned properly. So there are parts of it that are well composted, but for the most part, there's still a lot of straw there that has not broken down. Uh, that was not my compost pile. <laughs> that was just the pile of waste from the chicken coop. But, you know, that's kind of what we did with it. We haven't put putting any scraps or anything else in there because that all goes to the chickens. Uh, so, yeah, uh, we'll have to check with the uh, municipal transfer station that's, uh, you know, part of this township, you know, a couple towns over. Uh, we can get, f you know, free compost there as much as we can fill in the back of a pickup truck. I will have to put that under the microscope and see what we've got going on there. I don't entirely trust their compost. I did use it two years ago. Uh, as well as some other compost sources. It tends to be very rough. It tends to have a lot of garbage, uh, a lot of chippings. Uh, you know, you're pulling out pieces of plastic and tin as you, you know, sifting it to get out all the, the junk that you don't want. So it's not the greatest compost, but it is free and we can get a lot of it. So if I test it and it's got the life we need, then who cares about the garbage in it? We'll make a tea or an extract out of it. Alright, so until next time, uh, have fun.